In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one true God. Dearly beloved Athens, my sisters and brothers, and young friends of St. Thomas Orthodox Church, Philadelphia. I am grateful to Kriyakos Sachin, your Vaika, for inviting me to be part of your annual feast of St. Thomas, one of the apostles and the founding father of our church in Malacca. It's a wonderful thing that uh, I can speak to you from Thrissur and you are listening to me while on the other side of the globe. God's purpose is being fulfilled in us, transcending the limits of time and space. Actually, there is no other disciple who has been referred to in the Gospels like St. Thomas. And therefore, it's quite fitting for us to observe his feast. St. Thomas is the one apostle who was referred to at several locations in the Gospel. And all of them, except the reference to calling of the disciples, come from St. John's Gospel. Four occasions, and all of them are very crucial occasions. We would be this evening considering the first one, which is recorded in the, the Gospel according to St. John chapter 11, verse 16. Didimos in the Perula, Thomas, Saka Shishiroda, Avanodu Kode, Marikandadana, Namum Poga Yanapara. This is uh, halfway through of a long story. The story starts with uh, Jesus residing at the side of Jordan River where John baptized him. But he wanted to go to Judea and visit his friend Lazarus. But Lazarus is not going to be able to do it. He is not going to be able to do it. He is not going to be able to do it. He is not going to be able to do it. He is not going to be able to Shudamburane Abdavache Kolan Shramiche Tula Uru Moon and Poem Lucos and the Association of the Lana Shudamburan Paranegayu Avanara and the Vishayu, the Huda Maria Samantha Chatatolum, Angigari can put him to Lagari. One another and Shamaria Karana and the Ruada. രണ്ടാമത് രക്ഷപ്പെട്ടു പോവുകയാണ് 
ലാസർ സുഖമല്ലാതെ കിടക്കുക ബട്ട് ഹി ഡിൻ വാണ്ട് ടു ഗോ ഇമ്മീഡിയറ്റ്ലി വാണ്ട് ടു വെയ്റ്റ് ഫോർ ടു ഡേയ്സ് ബിക്കോസ് ഹിസ് പെർപ്പസ് ക്യാൻ ബി അക്കംപ്ലിഷ്ഡ് ഓൺലി ഇഫ് ഹി വെയ്റ്റ്സ് ഇതൊരു വലിയ പ്രശ്നമുള്ള ഒരു കാര്യമാണ് ക്ഷമിക്കുകയോടെ ക്ഷമയോടെ കാത്തിരിക്കുക എന്നുള്ളത് എപ്പോഴും നമുക്ക് സാധിക്കുന്ന ഒരു കാര്യമല്ല ഉടനെ തന്നെ കാര്യങ്ങൾ നടക്കണം അത് ഏറ്റവും ഭംഗിയായി നടക്കണം എന്നൊക്കെ നിർബന്ധമുണ്ടാവും പക്ഷെ യേശു നമ്പുരൻ ചെയ്യുന്ന ഓരോ കാര്യവും വളരെ ശ്രദ്ധയോടുകൂടെ ചെയ്യുന്നതാണ് കാരണം ലളിതമായ ഒരു കാര്യമല്ല അവൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് അതുകൊണ്ട് രണ്ട് ദിവസം കാത്തിരിക്കുന്നു അതാണ് ഏശായ പ്രവാചകൻ നാൽപ്പതാം അധ്യായത്തിൻ്റെ മുപ്പത്തി ഒന്നാം വാക്യത്തിൽ പറയുന്നത് എങ്കിലും യഹോവയെ കാത്തിരിക്കുന്നവർ ശക്തിയെ പുതുക്കും യഹോവയെ കാത്തിരിക്കുന്നവർ യഹോവ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് രക്ഷകനും വീണ്ടെടുപ്പുകാരനും വിമോചകനുമായ ദൈവമാണ് ആ വിമോചനത്തിന് അതിൻ്റെതായ കാത്തിരിപ്പിൻ്റെ ആവശ്യമുണ്ട് നമുക്കറിയാം മിശ്രയിമിൽ നാനൂറ് സമ്പത്സരമാണ് കാത്തിരുന്നത് ഈ വേദഭാഗം ഏശയാ പ്രവചനം പറയുന്ന ആ സന്ദർഭം വാസ്തവത്തിൽ നാൽപ്പത് വർഷത്തെ കാത്തിരിപ്പിന് ശേഷം ഉണ്ടാകുന്ന ഒരു സദ്വാർത്തയുടെ സന്ദർഭമാണ് ഇസ്രായേലി ജനം ബാബേൽ രാജാവിനാൽ ആക്രമിക്കപ്പെട്ട് ബാബേലിൽ അടിമകളായി പാർക്കുന്ന കാലം ദറ്റ് വാസ് സംതിങ് ടെറിബിൾ ഫോർ ദ their their temple was destroyed, their city was was destroyed, city splintered and all the city walls were were pulled down. They were taken to a land where they thought God has nothing to do with. And that's why in 137 Psalm, they were lamenting aloud and saying, how can we sing the Lord's song? in a strange land god has no power over there but that doesn't affect god god was waiting for the right time to liberate the people we need to wait upon we are in a very troubled context now the whole world corona virus caused covid-19 and for the last two or more years the whole world is suffering hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives millions and millions of people are in terrible debt and suffering a lot of people lost job a lot of people don't have much resource to support themselves they are like the israel in exile in an exilic situation this is not what we wanted this is not what we wanted to experience we don't have sunday service very frequently we don't have people participating in the service actually in my diocese last sunday was the first sunday after several weeks we had limited at least limited number of participants in the service this is a sort of excellent situation but this will also go away we need to work with god and god has given us science with which we could work now the three techniques mask 
sanitizer and distance, social distancing. And again, in record time, God enabled the ants to prepare vaccine that will help us fight against this pandemic. This is the work of God. Of course, we had to wait for a couple of years. And in the meantime, a lot of disturbances, lot of difficulties we had to face. But compare it with those people who had to wait for salvation for, for 100 years and those people who had to wait for 40, 45 years. We are in a better shape. We are in a better blessed situation. God has been so merciful to us that he helped the scientist to prepare vaccine in record time. We need to glorify him. We cannot lose our heart. A lot of people, at least to my knowledge, commit a suicide. In uh, some of our schools, I happen to be the manager of the schools of our church. A lot of church uh, schools lost the kids because they committed suicide. They could not stand the pressure of being at home without attending classes in a normal way. Depression. Of course our teachers worked very hard to help them keep their sanity, to keep equilibrium of their mind. But still, because they could not wait. I don't know whether the parents were able to provide support. Now this is the situation. Of course, we had to undergo a lot of stressed situations related to job, related to our financial situation, our loan repayment, about our dear ones, beloved ones back home. Some of them were not able to attend the funeral of their own dear ones. But still, we'll have to wait for the moment that God will liberate us from this pandemic. He will do it. And that has been proven through historical facts. And that's what we learn from this story in the first place. Then St. Thomas, against the objection raised by the disciples, courageously said, even if we have to die with him, we will go. Because following Christ, he knew was the right thing to do. That was their goal in their life. That was the only thing they could do because Jesus was going to raise Lazarus and then go to Jerusalem to be tried, crucified, buried and resurrected. So finally, Jesus had to go to Jerusalem. And then the disciples had to join him because they had to witness all that happened in the process of 
liberating creation from the bondage of sin. Now later when uh, Jesus was resurrected and appeared to disciples, we know Saint Thomas refused to take the witness from others. He said, I want to see it. I want to experience it because I am going to some place where I need to witness the resurrection with all confidence. Without having experienced personally, how can we witness? And for this occasion, what was going to happen in the case of Lazarus was only a sign of what was to happen in Jerusalem. Now this is what John always tells us. In John's Gospel we don't have miracles. Miracles happen once in the life of one or few people. But science, as in the case of uh, what happened in uh, the marriage feast in Cana, that was not the end of it. It's only a sign. A sign which will be taken to its fullness in future. So when Jesus said, my time has not come, in Cana, he knew this is not going to be the end of pouring out the intoxicating drink. The intoxicating drink has to come out of himself as blood from on the cross. And that is why this is in chapter 17 of John's Gospel said, Father, my time has come. So, what he did was only a sign in Cana for to be accomplished or finalized on the cross. And this one, raising Lazarus from among the dead, was again a sign. Later he travels with that hope in the minds of people that resurrection is possible. He goes to Jerusalem to fulfill his mission of carrying the whole creation to resurrection, liberation from death. And Saint Thomas said, even if we had to die, we have to go. Now this should be our testimony too. This pandemic will go away. But something different will come. This is the nature of life. But we have to outlive, overcome every challenge that comes before us and experience a resurrection in this world and that will lead us to resurrection at the end of times during the second coming. So every moment needs to be a moment of resurrection. We have concerns at home, education of children, their job, finding a partner for them, or they are finding a partner. News that comes from back home, or our car is too old or we need to move from one place to another place. 
small, small domestic issues. They are not negative issues. They are all positive challenges that will take us to resurrection. And our Lord travels with us. And with Saint Thomas, we need to travel to Jerusalem where we shall see life in its fullness. So every moment in our life is a moment of waiting on the one hand for a better future to come and also a moment of primary accomplishment of the last moment. So every moment in our life is a sign and if it should become a sign we need to accept the testimony of Saint Thomas seriously in our lives. We need to go with him no matter where he would take us to. And it is assured that he will take us only to resurrection. Now the people when Isaiah said in chapter 40 verse 1 following Comfort my people Comfort my people, says the Lord. Not many people believed it. Because Nebuchadnezzar was a very strong king in Babylon. And after a couple of following kings came the Persian king Cyrus. Nobody ever expected that this king will let us go back to Jerusalem and help us rebuild the city and the temple. As a matter of fact, not many people were ready to go also. But those who went, taking seriously the edict of Cyrus in 537, they were able to accomplish, build, rebuild the temple and rebuild the city war and start worshipping again. So this pandemic is nothing but only a situation which is given to us to experience the love of God. To experience the liberate you work of God in our midst. I always think about the vaccine how many companies, pharmaceutical companies, you know, billions and billions of people had to be vaccinated. Your country is much better in that respect than India or many other countries. Because you are the ones who were even more ready to go with God by manufacturing the vaccine and administering them. In the meantime, I would salute the help to workers. But they waited for the time which will bring salvation and cure to everyone. Thomas said, let's go. Let's go. We have waited and it is time for us to go. And Didymus, Thomas said to his fellow disciples, even if we had to die, we shall go with him. 
follow our Lord in every step. Consult Him. Pray to Him that we may be wise enough to do what should we do to overcome the situations and challenges that come before us. And that will give us comfort in our lives. We don't have to be sad. We don't have to retreat. We don't have to be sorry about our lives. God is there preparing the way to the resurrection of Lazarus. And that is not the end of it. It is only the beginning. The end is the resurrection of Christ, the Son of Man, who represents all sons and daughters of human race. This is what St. Thomas is exhorting us. Let us listen to him carefully. Today is a wonderful day. God has given us this day for us to remember on the one hand who gave us a great valuable witness about following our Lord and also for he being the person who laid the foundation to our church in Malakara. We are blessed people. Of course there are other people also. But the four statements from St. From Thomas, all of them very important and challenging that we can take as mottos in our lives. St. Thomas, our church father, tells us, go with him. Don't be afraid. I will be your God. I will be your salvation. St. Thomas didn't have to die. The disciples did not have to die. Christ died for them and us. And what happened with Lazarus will happen with us also. Not only on the second coming, but in every moment, every step forward we may have is an experience of resurrection, outliving, and therefore take the words of St. Thomas as a valuable suggestion, as a valuable advice given to us today as we observe the feast of that great saint our patron father, our patron saint, and decide on ourselves that we shall follow him. No matter what adverse situation may come and challenge us in this world. Once again, dearly beloved, I express my sincere thanks to all of you, particularly Kuryako Sacha. We have been together right from my seminary days. He was my 
second examiner in BD thesis period. And now we are good friends. I thank him for his invitation and thank Achans and all of you for this wonderful opportunity. Trust in the Lord, wait upon Him and travel with Him that we may experience wonders with Him. And the greatest wonder you will be experiencing tomorrow. The Holy Sacrament of Eucharist. And that enables us strengthens us to face any challenge that may come. We don't have to die, but even if we had to, we will follow Him without fail, always. That is the commitment, the pledge that we take today. Thank you. God bless us all.